So let's continue our exploration of Django models in this video. We're going to see how we can actually get data to and from the database and into our Django applications. And this is going to be another video in the Django introduction playlist that we've been creating. And you can find the link to that playlist just below the video. And if you're enjoying this content and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. And if you want to join the channel, we've also opened memberships. Now let's get started and go back to the documentation. In the last video, we looked at the database setup. We looked at creating models and activating those models. We're now going to move on to this section on playing with the API. So we're going to run this command. It's python manage.py shell. Let's go back to VS Code. And in the terminal here, we're going to paste that in. And what this is going to do is open an interactive Django shell. And using that shell, we can then look at objects such as the question and choice models that we have in the Django application. And we can then use them to, for example, get all of the questions from the database or add new ones update existing questions or remove existing questions. So I want to highlight the distinction between what we did in the last video and what we're going to do here. In the last video, we defined these Django model classes and we saw how the models actually get mapped to database tables in the database. Now we're going to see that we can also use these models to actually get data to and from the database. So let's take the question model here to start with. And I'm going to expand this shell here so we can see it better. And if we just put question in there, we can see we get the question model. Now let's go back to the documentation here. And we're going to follow some of the queries that are defined here in the documentation. So one of these queries is question.objects.all. Let's copy that and let's paste that into the terminal. And we're going to see that we don't have any questions in the database table at the moment. So what this is doing is it's taking the question table and it's querying to get all of the rows in that table. Now, if we go to Beekeeper Studio and we look at the polls question table here, let's view that data. And you can see at the moment, we don't actually have any data. So we've got the columns ID, question text and publication date, but we don't have any rows that represent a question at the moment. And by the way, the ID column is implicitly added by Django. This is something that's not mentioned in the previous video. We did not define an ID column, but the table needs what's called a primary key. And if you do not define one, Django will implicitly add that ID column and you can see that both for the question and the choice models. So at the moment, as you can see on the terminal, we don't have any questions in the database. We get an empty query set. Now in Django applications, a query set represents a collection of objects from the database. And if you execute question.objects.all, you're going to get back every single row in the corresponding table, in this case, the question table. Let's go back to the documentation. We're now going to see how to actually create a new question here. So what we need to do here is instantiate the question model and we provide the data here and we're going to do this in the terminal so we can see it better. And then we call the save method to actually save that object into the database. So let's copy this code here. We're going to start by importing the time zone from Django.utils. So let's bring that into the terminal here. And if we paste that in, we can import the time zone module. And this has some useful functions. For example, timezone.now will give you the current date time. Now what we're going to do is instantiate a question model now. So let's copy the question model and we're going to create a variable here called question and instantiate the question model. Now when we actually create the question, we need to pass the fields into that. So if we look at the model that we have here, we've got a question text field and we also have the publication date field. So let's go back to the shell here and we're going to provide these. And I'm going to copy it from the documentation here and paste it into the arguments. Now, these are actually keyword arguments. They have the same name as the field on the model. So the question text is going to be what's new and the publication date is going to be timezone.now. So let's create this question here. But at the moment, this question only exists in memory in the Python application. It does not actually exist in the database. So if we go back to Beekeeper Studio and we look at the question table here, we can still see that we have no data. So as it says in the Django documentation, we need to save that object explicitly by calling the save method on the question object. So let's do that just now. We have this question object here. And by the way, if we look at the ID of that, we can see that that is currently none because it does not exist in the database. But if we then call dot save, that is then going to persist the question into the database. So we can now go back to Beekeeper Studio. And when we query the database this time, you can see we have the row. So the question text is what's new and we have the publication date here as well. And it's been given the ID of one. And notice this key here. This refers to the primary key of the database table. You can manually create that if you need to in your Django model class. But by default, that's going to use an auto incrementing integer. And if we go back to VS Code, let's now take a look at question.id. We saw before that that was null, but this time we have the ID of one. So as soon as you save the object to the database, it's going to be given the ID which you can then reference. So what else can we do with this question? We can actually access the model field values 
via Python attributes. So we have a field here called question text. We saw that that was defined on the model here. So if we take the question here and we access the question text property, we can get back the question text, which is what's new. And similarly, we can access question.publication date to get that date time object. Now we can actually change the values of properties as well. So we're going to take question.question .question text and let's assign a new value here. So I'm going to type in some text here. Let's say new value. And when we execute that, I want to note something here. Question.question .question text in memory is going to say new value. But in the database, it's still going to say what's new until we call that same save method. So let's take the question one more time here and we're going to call dot save. When we save this to the database, it's going to perform an SQL update under the hood and it's going to update the value of this particular question that we can see here and it's going to update this question text. So if we refresh this data one more time, we can see the new value appears in that column. So the first time we called save, we were actually creating the new row in the database. The second time, we're just changing the existing values. In the case of the question text column, we were changing that value. So the first time we're creating that row, and that's going to use the SQL insert into statement. The second time we are updating the value in the table. So we're now seeing the Django ORM in action. It gives you a way to create new objects in the database and also update existing data. And it also gives you a way to pull objects out of the database. And if you want to know a lot more about that, check out the Django ORM series that we've done. And I'll leave a link to that just below the video. Now let's access question.objects.all one more time. We saw that before was an empty query set. So when we executed it up here, we had an empty query set. If we re-execute that at the bottom here, we're going to get back a query set that contains a single object, as we can see here. So this time when we fetch all of the objects from the question table, this time the table is not empty, so we're going to get back these objects. And what's going on under the hood is that Django is taking the row that's coming back from the database and it's constructing the question model from that data. So if we then access this query set, and to do that, I'm going to create a variable called questions and we can re-execute the query. What we can do is index into the query set at index zero to get that one object. And then we can take that object and we can actually access the properties, for example, the question text, and we can get those properties. And we can do that for all of the objects returned that are part of that query set. So again, Django is taking this data in the row and it's constructing the question model and a query set of those models is going to be available in the Django application. And you can then use that to display database data in your applications. So let's go back to the documentation again. And one thing it notes here is that this representation of the object, this string representation is not helpful. You can fix that by adding a dunder string method. So let's just do that just now to finish things off. What I'm going to do is exit out of this shell and we can go back to the model classes here. And to the question model, I'm going to paste in the dunder string method that's going to return self.questionText. Now self in this case refers to an instance of the class. So when we have an instance of the question, we can get the instance's question text by referencing self.questionText. And that's what we want to return as the string version of the question. And we can do something similar for the choice. Again, if we go back to the documentation here, what we can do is copy this dunder string method and we can paste that in here. And this time we're returning self.choice text. So let's save this and we can then go back to the Django shell. I'm going to clear this out and it's going to be python manage.py shell. And that's going to bring up the shell again. And we can then execute question.objects.all to get all of the questions from the database. And we can see the string representation here. It no longer says question object. Instead, what we actually have is the value from the question text field on the model because that's what we're returning from the dunder string method. So that value from this column here is going to be what's returned. And we can also add our own custom methods to the model. So for example, the question model, we might want to create a method called was published recently. So let's just copy this code here and go back to our model class. And on the question model, I'm going to paste in this code here just under the dunder string method. And I'm going to fix the indentation. And we need to import the time zone module and also Python's date time module. We can do that at the top here. So we're importing date time and also time zone. So what this method is doing on the question model, for an instance of the question, it's going to look at self.publication date. And it's going to check if that is greater than or equal to the current time minus a time delta of one day. So if the question instance was published within the last day, this method is going to return true. And you can add your own type hints here as well. For example, we know this is going to return a Boolean, so we could add that there. So again, if we exit the shell here and rerun python manage.py shell, and notice that you need to do that anytime you make a change. So python manage.py shell, we've now added that method. 
and we can get that question from the database by calling question.objects.first. So the dot first method is going to get the very first row from the database and we get that single question model back and we can then call that method. So the method is called was published recently and we expect this to return true because we set the current time or the publication time to the current time. Now let's see a couple of extra examples of what we can do by going back to the Django documentation. So Django provides a rich database lookup API that's entirely driven by these keyword arguments. So as well as dot all, we can call the dot filter method if we want to do some filtering on that database data instead of just returning every single row from the table. So here we are filtering and we pass in an ID of one. That's gonna give us back the question with the ID of one. So let's try that out. When we execute that, we get the query set back with the single model that has that ID. And again, going back here, we can also use these kind of lookups here, such as starts with. So I want to show this, and this is gonna return no results because we actually changed ours in the database. So question.objects.filter. And we take the question text and notice this modifier here, which we specify with two underscores. And one of the modifiers Django has is starts with. So if we look at the question text, we want to find any questions that start with the text of what. If we execute that, we get back an empty query set because our question text contains new value. So it does not start with what. But if we copy this statement here and let's change what's here to new and we get back the result. So you can see the flexibility of Django's API for querying objects in the database. And we can do this kind of filtering based on things like the date times. So for example, if we wanted to get objects that were published in the last year, we can actually do that. And if we request an ID that does not exist, I'm gonna copy this statement here. Let's paste that in. What we get back is an exception. And Django tells us that a question matching that query does not exist. And notice this method here, question.objects.get. This is a method that's expected to return one object from the database. And if that object does not exist, it's gonna throw that exception. Now, what you can typically do is look up objects by their primary key when you use the dot get method. And if that object does exist, you will get back the corresponding Django model instance that represents that row with that primary key. Now, what we can also do is create relationships between objects. So we know that the question is the parent of the choices because if we go to models.py here, we created that foreign key on the choice model that linked it to the parent question. And if we go to the database here, the choice table that we have here contains that particular column. It's question ID, and that is a foreign key to the question tables ID. So how do we create these using the ORM? We did a lot of videos on that in the ORM series, but let's go back to the documentation for a very quick overview. We're gonna get the question with the ID of one from the database, so let's paste that in here. And we have that question with the text of new value. Now to that question, we want to add some choices. So the idea here is that in a polls application, we have a question and then we have a set of options or choices that the user can pick. And we need these options to be related to the correct question. So that's the role of the foreign key, but how do we actually create these? What we can do is take the question and we have access to a manager called choice set. Now that comes from the name of the related model underscore set. And then we can use the same methods such as dot all and dot filter. Or if we are creating objects, we can use the create method. So at the moment, the question has no choices. If we paste this in here, we have an empty query set coming back. But we can then create choices here and I'm gonna copy these lines of code. So we're going to create three of these. Let's paste that first one into the terminal here and we get back a choice as we can see. Now in order to create the choice, we've taken the question, we've accessed the choice set relation and then we call dot create and we're passing in the same kind of key keyword arguments here as we did before. So the choice text is not much and it's gonna have zero votes. And I'm also gonna create the other two from the documentation and these have different text. And for the final choice, we're gonna store that in a variable called C. And as you can see, that references the choice model. So from the choice model, we can very easily access the parent question just by accessing the question property. And that's because this is where the foreign key is defined. If we look at the choice model, when we have an instance of that, we can just access dot question in order to get the parent question to which the choice belongs to. But we saw when we're going in the other direction, when we have a question and we want to get all of its associated choices, we just take the name of the model. In this case, the related model is called choice. And then we add an underscore and it's the set. So that is why this becomes q.choiceset.create and q.choiceset.all. That's how we access the relation in the other direction from where the foreign key was defined. Again, for much more information on that, check out the Django ORM series that we have just linked below the video. Once we've added the three choices, if we re-execute this here, q 
q.choiceset.all. Let's go back to VS Code and go back to the terminal. We can paste that in and this time we get back a query set that contains three choices. And we could then iterate over those and display them, for example, in the user interface. And we're going to see an example of that later in the series. And another cool thing we can do is actually chain these methods together. So we can take q.choiceset.all and we can chain .count if we just want to get back the number of choices. And we can see we get back three here. And as well as .all, we can call .filter instead in order to do some filtering in the database. And if we go back to the Django documentation, let's look for the choices that start with just hacking. And we're going to paste that in here. And we expect to get back that single object that had that text. And that's what we get back here. We get a query set that contains that single object. Now, dot .filter is always going to return a query set of objects, even if it contains only a single object within the query set. And that's because dot .filter doesn't know necessarily how many objects are going to be returned from the database. Even if it's just a single object, that's going to be represented as a query set containing that single object. If you want to get back a single model, as we saw before, you can call the dot .get method. And of course, another alternative is to take that statement there and index in at zero to get the model from that query set. Now, before we finish, let's have a look at the actual database itself. The choice table we saw before had no objects, no rows. When we refresh this table, you can see we have the three rows appearing here. And we can see the text, we can see the number of votes that each choice has, and also the relation here to question ID one. And that means that this is linked to the question that has this ID of one. And when you perform these queries in Django, Django is smart enough to know how to construct the models and the references from this data. And you as the developer don't need to worry about that. One last thing to do, let's have a look at the choices table here. Now the last choice with just hacking again, we pulled that out and we stored that in a variable called C. So let's have a look at that here. What we can also do is remove stuff from the database by calling .delete. So if we call c.delete here, that's going to remove that from the database. Let's go back here and refresh this and we can see we're down to two rows. So Django's got this really nice flexible API for working with databases. And we've seen the basics very quickly in this video. Again, if you want a more in-depth look at this, check out the ORM series just below the video. So that's going to be all for this video. If you've enjoyed the content and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page just below the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. In the next video, we're going to start looking at the Django admin. And that is one of the big selling points of Django. It's super useful. So we're going to dive into that in the next video. Thanks again, and we'll see you then.